Hi, my name's Pete and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're a new visitor, you're very welcome and I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel after you've seen what I do today. Today I'm going to be painting, um, it's a scene by Ted Wesson, I'm using a hake brush. Um, I've not really used hake brushes that much, I tend to favour a mop brush, which I find is a more controlled experience than the hake but the hake will produce some lovely skies and uh, it obviously stops you getting too tight in your painting so let's get on with it um, plan is I'm going to be using the hake brush today now this is uh, I'm not not use the hake brush that much I tend to favor mops but uh, I thought I'd have a go with the hake today um, I've not really ever used a big one, but um, I, I tend to use the one inch one um, occasionally, but we'll see how we go. Um, I'm using Ted Wesson as an um, inspiration. I've picked out this scene, Winter Trees, which I will loosely base my picture on. So here we go. First go off, I'll mix some colour. There's quite a lot of uh, sky on this, so let's mix up a fair a bit of sky mixture. I'll mix with a mop brush and that looks to me like cobalt. And it is greyed slightly so we'll put a touch of um, don't see any in that, I think, just to grey it slightly. Right, let's mix up um, some light red. Just a weak mixture, it's also in the sky. I think just a touch stronger. Just a touch of raw sienna, I think. It's a little bit weaker. So I'm going to go in with the sky first. Now, one of the problems with hake is it's quite a thirsty brush, so it's best not to work with it too wet. But uh, let's just soak the paper, leaving some dry bits as well. I'm using Bockingford today, uh, 200 pound knot or cold pressed. Sienna in that just at the bottom here. And they're fairly weak. Come down a bit more. Let's up into the sky a little bit. And try not to overwork this. Central bit in here with the blue. Touch up that corner as well. A very slight slope on my uh, board here, probably about 10 degrees. This just helps with the blending on so. the paper. now as well. Just in some of the clouds here. The raw 
more sienna should turn this a bit grey. In fact, I will mix up a little bit of grey, just to put a bit more raw sienna in that. Use some ultramarine, I think. It is a winter sky, so I just want it bordering on the cool side rather than the warm side. Okay, it's just a get a nice little chisel point on the hake, and let's just dot in a few bits. It's worth mentioning that the studio lighting is actually washing the painting out a little bit, the colours. Uh, the sky is actually coming up a lot darker, as you'll see towards the end of the video. lifting out on this now Just softening some of the cloud edges now with a piece of tissue. Right, we'll let that dry at that. Okay, I've got that dry now. I'll just run over with the hair dryer while I was off camera. I'm just going to put the background hills in now. I think actually I'll mix up a slight touch of uh, a, gr a bluey green as well. So I'll use some Oriolin. Very uh, weakish mixture, and touch of cobalt blue. And that's that's about right. Okay, background hills first. I've squeezed the um, hake out. It's pretty dry now. I've got it to a chisel point. So let's just get some uh, colour in that. Can't stress enough how important it is to keep the hake fairly dry. It is a very thirsty brush. I'm sort of starting from here and going up like that, down and These background hills are obviously in the distance, so it needs to be a fairly light colour and bordering on the blue side. Okay. Bring my brush out. Let it dry. Here. This is some of the blue green mix now of cobalt blue and oriolin just to give it a little bit of greenery on the background hills. It is bordering on the blue side again, there's more cobalt than oriolin actually in there. Just put a touch of uh, dark in that as well. Just Do 
loose up. Just left a bit of a hard edge there. One problem with the hake brush is that I've tried to form a chisel point with this one but as you can see the bristles are actually separating so it tends to break up the line. You can't get a nice clean line and that's what I'm after here. Turn the brush off. Just softening some of the edges now I'll try to give it a little bit of lost and found. Uh, that's a little bit of a little bit of a tie bark there. and found on the top edge there. I actually ended up taking away too much colour so I'm just touching in some of the blue background again. Uh, that's the problem with Bockingford, it is so easy to lift uh, colour off it. It can be an advantage but it can also be a bit of a pain. Just uh, get that into that bit there. Just going in with the number four round sable now. So I'm just want to get rid of some of these sharper edges on there. It's difficult to do with the hake brush. Just soften that. mixture just top of the hill there a few dry brush marks now just to give the hillside a little bit of texture sufficiently. I know I said I'd use the hake but uh, there's certain bits of this that uh, I think need uh, just 
bit smaller brush. Just uh, put that in there. Okay, now what I want to do is soften this edge so that when I come back to it, the bottom edge there, I'll just soften that out. That'll enable me to paint over that without the hard edge showing through the subsequent layers. So that when I come back, I've got a nice soft edge to work to. Okay, that's nice and dry now. I think the next thing I'm going to do is there's a group of trees here. I'm just going to put some outlines in for those. I need a fairly thick mix. So let's mix up some more colour. That's a bit too grey, that is. What's that one? That's a bit too thin. Oh, let's put this first tree in here. I'm still having a few problems with this large hake with the house separating. I think it needs to be a bit stronger than that. Probably if the brush was wetter the hairs would hold together better but of course that weakens the mixture then. So it's a bit of a catch-22 as to what you actually do at the end of the day. You can see on the tree that I'm painting there, it has actually left almost like a tram line down the left hand side there, which is difficult to actually get it to close up with this brush. I do think that hake brushes probably take a bit of conditioning, but the more you use them, they get, the better they get. I can't seem to get a very good point on this hike, a uh, chisel point. That's why I don't really use them to be honest. I'm not a big fan, but I just thought I'd give it a go today. I really like to be more in control. Let's go for a smaller brush. This one is uh, definitely better for the chisel point. The light is actually coming from the left, so we'll darken down the right hand side of the tree there. Now this is one thing that the hake is very good for. Uh, because the bristles tend to separate, you can get really good effects with grass. 
and I'm actually doing it um, dark against the light there. Some yellow ochre in this now. Just a bit of variation. Right. Brighten it up even more. Put a touch of light red in that. It's also good for stippling, as you can see, you sort of get a, quite a nice texture with that there. some of this just lifting out one or two light patches there that's one thing the bucking pit is good for you can lift off it very easily Just recovering some of the light areas on the left hand side of these trees now and try and give them a little bit of form. Because I didn't pre soak this paper, uh, it's not stretched. And it does leave an awful lot of size actually in the paper. And Bockerford has a lot of size, that's why you can lift off it so easily. Back to the number four sable now, just to sharpen up some of the edges of these trees. very fond of hate brushes. Right, we're into the first of my speeded up sections here, just while I finish off the trunks of these trees. And speed it up four times here. Pretty much happy with the trunks now, just still doing one or two darker bits just to give them a bit of form. But uh, I'll shortly go into more tree work. Right, put a few more branches off that now. So let's make some really strong colour.
Now to speed it up section. Uh, the colour I actually mixed here was a mixture of ultramarine and burnt umber, tending towards the brown side, a very dark brown, to give these branches a bit of contrast against the sky here. Still using the number four sable at the moment. This is sort of the intermediate branches. I will actually switch to a rigger brush just to do the finer branches in a little while. Right, here's the rigger brush. Doing lots of little tweaks now. It really brings the trees to life, this does. This is more of the same now, so I'll see you on the other side of this. A bit of dry brush work actually in the hedgerow there and around the trees at the base.
Okay, let's uh, put some meat on the trees now. Well, it looks like a slightly pinky colour. So I'm going to use some Naples yellow with some red. Using Naples yellow because it's opaque will help with covering up some of the branches to give like a lost and found amongst the tree. So let's see how that looks. Grey it's a little touch I think as well, just a touch of ultramarine in that. Okay, we'll speed this up again. This is representing all the small branches in the tree there. Because it's winter, there's no real green involved. It could be dead leaves or small branches. I'll be softening some of the edges as well as I go along. Just taking out some of the tree trunks there to give the illusion that those leaves are actually in front of the trunks there. We'll make a start on the path now. This is a mixture once again of light red and Naples yellow. Slightly more towards the red side now. Just putting in this pathway. I've gone back to the small hake. Just dry it off with the hair dryer there to speed up the process. A little bit of 
bit of Rosanna on the right hand bank there. And also filling in some of the lighter areas on the left hand bank. Now for the middle distant trees. This will be lighter than the foreground trees. Just putting in a few of the branches first. Once again speeding up the process. A little bit of dry brushwork on this right hand bank now just to give it some shape and texture. just knocking these branches back a little bit now so that it actually pushes them back into the distance. Okay, putting some foliage on the tree now. I'm using the brush on the side Okay, we'll speed up the process here again while I'm putting on the foliage on those trees. Right, I'll do some dry brushwork on this right hand side bank now. That's a bit of light red and maple shallow going in there first. Now 
have the burnt umber and ultramarine mix. Put some darks in that hedgerow. Few more branches in those trees. Uh, a little more dry brushwork around the leaves on the canopy of that tree there. Final tree on that side now, just speed it up. during the final stages now I'm about to put the shadows in from the trees that's the first tree I'll speed up the process for the other two trees now, it's more of the same. Notice how I'm lifting the shadow on the right hand side there to accentuate the curve of the bank. This is a cast shadow from something that's not in the picture, a large tree just off to the left there. A little bit more dry brushwork 
on the distance there. I'm coming down into that left hand hedgerow. A few more tweaks. to the number 4 round sable brush just to soften some of the edges of these shadows a little texture now across from the right, left hand bank there onto the pathway Just marking the edge of the right hand verge there. The darker areas in the tree tops there.
Okay, it's just dry enough there. Just a few final touches, put these telegraph poles in. Okay, just a little bit of dry brushwork across the pathway there, and a little bit more in the hedgerow. I'll call it a diet, but. Right, here's the finished painting. As I said earlier, the colours seem to get a bit, little bit washed out under the studio lighting, but this is a truer version of what I've just painted. 
I've also added a few birds above those right hand trees just to give it a bit of life. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't. And if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing to my channel. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.